No, haven't been. Do you guys forget us? This is so weird. I don't know how to Talking into a mic again? What have you been doing for a few months? Oh, making curtains. Nice. They're lovely. We love them. Nice. I went to the Bahamas. Nice. Oh, yeah. Hey, you know, the straw market? Julie, we, we, played, <laughs> we played your interview the other day. You did? Yeah. The one well, with, I was there when you played it. The one with Richard Preston, <laughs> the author of The Hot Zone. When the you Dick. Kept, the fake author. When you Dick. Kept, when you kept saying, Dick. When you kept saying that uh, you've been to Africa and he's a fake. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. We'll play it again for you. Uh, what have you been doing, B.L.? Um, making a fool out of myself because I had nobody to make jokes to. So yeah. I've been in all the grocery stores and, uh... Remember me? <laughs> I see <a> radio. <laughs> no, I just break out into songs and cash and carry or... Plug so you guys are ready to come back on the air, huh? Yeah. Once now, it started a whole brouhaha here with, uh, us not giving away your radio station, which you're going to be on, which is fine because it's a month away, but I'll definitely be telling everybody about it. Is it, it. a month? Yeah. Is that, is, that the, is that the new date? Yeah. Because it's been, it's been pushed back a couple of weeks, right? Yeah, we just had a shoot the other day for, you know, all the cool. promotion materials. You know? Oh, I got a cool thing to give you, too, that some guy sent me in of you guys. Because you run down and get that. Oh, I know what it is. Have, uh, have you considered that Playboy offer anymore? No, you know what? I went to the Bahamas uh, last month for the Real Men Don't Do pregame, pre-Super Bowl show that uh -huh. they had on pay-per-view. Right. And uh, there were playmates there. There were Hawaiian Tropic girls, NFL cheerleaders, and then the Hooters girls. And I represented Hooters. And, and you probably uh, blew everybody away. N no. No, there were so many beautiful girls. I think there were like six on each team, and we competed in sports and had... Nobody's as pretty as you. Why do, why, do, why do girls act that way? If you said to me, who was the funniest comic there? I'd, I'd say me. <laughs> me and some other guys did all right. They got some little chuckles, little laughs, but I killed. you got to be more uh, confident in your beauty. You know she what? never has that been. Julie Williams never has been. I know, but that trip did a lot of good for me. It really, really? did. Yeah. Oh. The girls were very nice and very complimentary. Did you, go with the, did, you, did you go with a guy? No. No. I went with the Hooters girls. Are you, are you together. hitched up? Uh, what's going on with you? Uh, yeah. You are? You still with your yeah. bartender? Mark yeah. Allen? Wow. No. No, no, no. no. This is, and I were never an This is something somebody sent in for you guys. Oh, that's cool. It's, uh... Your head's on Mount Rushmore. <laughs> How cute, huh? People uh, went crazy after you guys went off the air. But, uh, you know, what can we say? We people, miss them. Uh, people love the fabulous sports, babe. <laughs> but, uh, what is she, two bills and some change? <laughs> well, you're being kind. Though. But, you know uh, <laughs> go ahead, BL. I, I do want to thank SUN, though. You know, they, they were always so nice to us, and we went out handling it classy. We've never said a word about them. That's, and we're always That's good to walk away like that. Everything, yeah, happened, everything happened like that nice until last night, and then Charlie K.O., Came in with an attitude today, like he was going to dump. Who's but, he? Nah, I don't know. He don't was worry a, about it. He was a guy nothing. who was almost on the inside. He came so close. Ronnie, I think that this may have been a, a misunderstanding. No, nah, he's a mutt, Ronnie. He's a mutt. I hate to hear that about Charlie K. Can though. I tell you something? Don't call him family. Eddie is family. This guy's a mutt. This guy screwed up. Eddie's been with us for nine years. Did you get this from somebody else? No, I got it from Fez Watley. Fez, but. All right. Without and I already had the thing of from Ross last night. And everybody knows we're not going to, you know, put somebody over like that. We take care of our people. Ten F. Um, Lynn Austin has just joined the other Hooters girls who arrived early. Ju uh, Julie and BL. Hi, Lynn. How you doing? Hi, Charlie. Your third angel's here. <laughs> uh, Good to see you. I just said kindergarten's kicking my butt all over the state. Every time I get well, I come home. Jack comes home with a cold. So, um, you know. How's he doing? He's he, sick. But how's he doing in kindergarten? Oh, kicking ass? Kicking ass. He's the top of the class. You really? Know? Come Can he beat every other kid up? No. Kids don't fight like that no. anymore. Why not? I don't know. Because they'll get time out. They don't uh, want to risk it. Yeah. Right. right. They get in the corner. Time out's too humili humiliating. Right. You're I remember out. in my school, whenever the kids would uh, have a fight and get a little rowdy, the teacher would just say, form a circle. Mm, and then you'd be the guy. You'd settle it here. Right. No. Yeah. You know, he did come home last night, and he said, hey, hey Mom. I said, well, he said, no, he's five. Do you know what Rojo is? Rojo? Rojo. I said, no. He said, red. 
He said, do you know what yeah, negra is? I said, why? He said, black. Do you very know the Lenko is white? Is, white he having, the South. is he having problems with negros in the school? <laughs> <laughs> because that happened to me when I was no. younger. Oh, you hang out with all black and, you know, before I know it, uh, I just started to imitate him. <laughs> so he's learning Spanish yeah, in kindergarten. Yeah, he started his second mm. language already. Wow. Wow. Oh, bueno. Is that all the kids, All the kids are just Spanish now. Second, I mean, but in kindergarten, I thought you like waited the till you... The sooner you learn it, the, the easier it is as a second language. That's, that's why kids... Uh, learn computer early because it becomes their second or third language. Well, he reeled off zero to 20 and like nothing. No, and I'm going, wait, uno is dos. Tw-. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know, you just, uh, I don't even help my kids with their homework. I go, go to your mom because I don't understand it. Especially that math. You know, and plus one day I had trouble making a D. I forgot. You know, I've, you I made grew- it like a B, didn't you? Well, no, I just, I go, I know what a D is. But how do you how make do you that make loop? It? It's a P with like a short. Oh, yeah. Backwards uh, upside down remember. P. 17 after, if you haven't written in a while, I mean, it's hard. signing your name is one thing. Yeah. You just scribble almost like an X. But to have to actually write things, it's it's weird. Theo, you have this problem. Why don't you talk about and, it? And oh, Matt, she's missing a finger. Oh, that ain't right, Austin. Hey, uh, BL, during the break, you were talking about the tossed salad situation. She brought it up during the break. She was actually, and I hate to be uh, this brutally honest, but you said it really turned you on. That's how she lost the finger. The tossed salad comments. Have, and be honest, have you ever had your salad tossed? Quite honestly, no trips to this salad bar, partner. <laughs> you hey. never had your salad tossed? No way. Now, Julie Williams, on the other hand, her nickname is Sizzler. <laughs> <laughs> you know who taught me tossed salad? Well, not physically taught me. <laughs> who would that be, Missy? Lou Maggio with Venus. Yeah, Blue I'm Man. sure he's he tossed, tossed your salad. salad? No, but he told me all about Have it. Have you had your salad tossed? I haven't. Be honest. I haven't. Have honestly. you tossed anybody's salad? No, I haven't. Lou <laughs> Maggio. Don't lie. At his Come side, on. that's an anapasta. You two, neither one of you have had your salad tossed. No. No, no, no. Honestly. B, look at BL. I can just see the guilt. <laughs> she probably had a toss last night. I swear to the swaddling clothes. All right? Is that good enough for you, DS? Yeah, okay. Big and shoeless Joe Jackson in the Yankees hat this morning. <laughs> Shoeless Joe did not play for the Yankees. Get that through your mind right now. She sees one baseball movie. She's an expert. You know, Diaz, i got to be honest. It's it's so nice to see you outside of the Fantasy Ranch. True. You know, when he gets out... I was there once. When he gets out... uh, (laughs) By the way, ladies, get him to autograph this on your way out of here. This is Ronnie. Where do you keep... There's there's one for everybody. Yeah. Ronnie, tear, it up, the, tear it up, please. You Ronnie. look so hot right now. Girls, don't fight over those. There's plenty. I know, but that's I don't want to That's when Ronnie hosts at the gyno room. I did not host it. I hosted a boxing match. That's all I did. And I left. And, Fez, you were there. You saw me leave right after I emceed the boxing match. Yes or no? I saw someone that looked like you. Oh, get out of here, man. <laughs> he is Cato. Don't turn him into Cato, into your Cato. I heard three bumps. <laughs> and a woman was in the gyno chair. And those were on the stirrups. And you still want to live in the guest house? He left immediately. Thank you. Um, Julie. Yes. Again, I asked you the tossed salad question. No, I have not. You, you, tossed my salad. You will swear that you never had your salad tossed. Mm-mm. I swear. Okay, then let's get uh, the let's get Matt Geiger on the line. All right. Because that's oh. all he talked about. You know, let me uh, tell you something. I'm telling you, that's all where? he talked about the last time I saw him. He's yeah. lying. Matt, even if he was on his knees, would be too high to toss her salad. With what, He'd have to lay on his belly like a snake. <laughs> with what Julie Williams can do with her legs, she could toss her own salad. <laughs> wow, that she would be can. a sight to see. She can. Uh, Kelly, you're on. Hey. Hey. I was just wondering, um, what time of the day are they going to be on? Are we going to be able to hear them in St. Pete? Is yeah, yeah, yeah. To they're going to be on in Tampa, and then you're going to be on around the state, too, right? There's plans for that. But okay. We, but we're not allowed to really talk about that yet. We want to get back to the show and get back our footing. Are you footing? <laughs> you had footing at one time? <laughs> Never mind the feet. Get back the fingers. Hey, um, Paulo was here today. He's doing uh, movie reviews oh, as he does every Thursday. And <laughs> I know. Don't run away. And he, he asked. To. They already licked him. He, he asked, came over and licked Lynn's foot. He asked if he could kiss any part of any, any of your bodies, including the bottom of your shoes, <laughs> Or even uh, through the pants. Uh, hey, how about when he licked that dung off of uh, the Jenna Torture's? But let me tell you, these are the three most perfect females in the world. I would. What would you like? Anything. What would you like to do? You know, I would do anything. You're turned on by any woman who doesn't have a 91 pound sister. That's true. These are perfect women. I love. But of all 
BL and Lynn and Julie. I can't decide. <laughs> I love them Don't all. Don't grab them. Don't grab them. Let go. I would rather sit on the corner of a road with a sign that says, we'll toss your salad. <laughs> you have. For a dollar. And he's St. Louis. So there's no place on your body today, even through the clothes, that you'll let Paulo kiss. Not even my arse. <laughs> <laughs> my ankles. Get, get, get away. Get away. I forgot, B.L. spent some time in uh, England, Ronnie, while uh, she was off the air. <laughs> my horse! Not even the bullocks! Not what? even me bloody bullocks! 21 after, Christine, you're on. Hello. Hi, Ronnie. Ron. I just want to say hi to the girls, and I missed you guys. I didn't, I didn't know what had happened. Just that one day I turned on and... Well, the whole station on. went to sports. So they, <laughs> um, they, they moved and they um, made some deals, wheeling and dealing, kiss stealing. And, uh, and the Hooters girls will be back in one month. And they're going to be syndicated. Hello, Scott, you're on the air. Scott, you idea? Hello? Okay, see ya. Uh, you know, i got to tell you girls this. We would not have been able to do the show if we would have taken every call that was complaining when you guys went off the air. That's why I had to laugh that, uh, you know, people would worry about us, you know, coming back and hammering them. Because, man, we went out of our way for, like, weeks to protect the station from what the hell is all this stuff, you know, where are my girls, I'm going to blow somebody up, I'm going to kill somebody. People love you guys. There wow. was a huge backlash. You know, and even B.L. had a couple of people. <laughs> That's true. They said they liked her. I've got to tell you, you guys have got to help B.L. get back somewhere. I mean, even if she's doing, like, changing your water cooler, Paulo is on your feet. Don't touch her. Um, I offered her a job with us right away. She refinished the bed. Do you have a dude? She's... B.L.? I have a, a steady piece. Do you really? And, you know, I made sure that none of you guys showed up in pup friction because I got all these third-hand things of B.L.'s going to kill herself and Julie's going to kill herself. No one called me directly. So you didn't end up on anywhere on it. All your little stuff you got away with. But we have another video that is just strictly... <laughs> oh, and that's uh, always ready. Yeah. You know, I don't want any nudity of me on video. No. Speaking of which, how come you're off of the Philly spring training on the center field? Yeah, they, these took, years? they took the billboard off. The Philadelphia Phillies took that off. Off oh. center field, but um, now, and this has happened months ago. Mm -hmm. All right, now don't look at me. It was just in the me. paper the other day. I know, it was in the paper, but it happened months ago that the contract ran out. And what happened is the Phillies offered a... A bigger billboard if to move it now guess where the bigger billboard is going to be Bearing left field play. left field oh, wow. the irony Darren Dahl, Darren Dahl yeah. former catcher for the mm. Phillies former husband of Lynn Austin is now moved I to left field I promise like Girl Scout and, uh, and everything I, I had nothing to do with this with Zed Drosty and it was done months before it was announced and I know you guys, you guys get along you guys are friends right Ronnie, don't start. We have, I'm not no, seriously. We have a child together. Right. So, I see. You know, I you see know. him all the time. Ronnie, please. You, you got to play that. Nice things. Bit. Nothing but nice things to say. Yeah. Good. I mean, we have a uh, child. Well, together. she knows him a little better. You got to. You know, you can't say. You know. Uh huh. Uh, Davey, you're on the air. Well, we, we could sit around telling Luna stories all day too. <laughs> Luna. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Davey, you're on. All right. Hey, how's it going, guys? Good. Hey, first and foremost, I want to let you guys know you guys are the penthouse. The penthouse of radio community. Of course we are, brother. <laughs> What's up with you, Jamie? I mean, I like it. Second of all, first yeah. of all, hey, man, hey, second of all, who was that ham and egg that kept me on hold for almost an hour and a half this morning, huh? Denise answers the phones. We're very no, busy Denise, today. It was some dude. Denise went out going getting food. Oh, when Denise went to get food, somebody else was answering the phone. Yeah, whoever that ham and egg was, I'm going to tell you right now, the challenge is this. Y'all <laughs> come into Savannah, Bo? Yeah. In my backyard. After, after I get finished pummeling and beating applesauce in the ground, mm -hmm. yeah. I want that ham and egg, and I'm going to turn him into cheese grits. You don't All come right. into his town, his hometown, without taking an ass whooping, Ronnie. Savannah is that the is next the live gig, and Jeff Appeloff yesterday screaming on the air, he wants another fight. You have got your fighter, Ronnie, at a pitch. Yeah. Where I hope he doesn't peak too early. No, he just can't wait to get back in the boxing ring. We'll be talking to him tomorrow about fighting. But right now, um, he's not available today, but he does want to fight. Yeah, he wants to fight bad. Yes. I got to come up with Because he got a taste for it. After now, he knocked Mo down and bloodied him in the sixth round, I, he really got the taste for boxing. Well, I, uh, you know, I offered just to go with the beer guy from my uh, spring training ticket. Ryan. Ryan, the beer guy. 
I don't know him that well. He looks like he can Ryan hunt. I don't uh, know. Ryan's I don't know. Guy. I don't know if Apollov can hunt. I haven't really, you know, saw I don't know him if he can handle. In the squared circle I don't yet. Think, I don't think Apollov can handle Ryan. He's a tough kid. Hello, Chris, you're on the air. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to let y'all know that I was glad to hear y'all back in Savannah again. Glad yeah. to be back. Yeah, and I was wondering... Hey, uh, we get blown off the air all the time, too, guys. <laughs> it's not your show. I was wondering... The other day, uh, Ronnie said, do, do, boom, we're off the air in mm -hmm. Savannah for two weeks it takes us to get back on. Go ahead. Yeah, I was wondering, uh, what is tossed salad? All right, oh, we're, we're not going to go through this so many times. We'll let BL, since he's most experienced, describe it when we come back. This is the Ronnie Dog has been uh, with us this morning bringing in supplements. Now, before you go... The Hooters girls were amazed at your before and after picture. You lost 100 pounds, and they were really amazed at your uh, your current condition and how you did it. Now, these girls obviously are all in great shape. Fantastic shape. Fantastic shape, but you can always improve yourself. I don't know. These three are awful tight. <laughs> They're beautiful. Well, you don't know them that well, then. Did, you? <laughs> Sick. Uh, did he have a 91-pound cyst? Is he the man? <laughs> no, no. That's a different story. That was a woman. Uh, Smoke Dog, if anybody needs supplements, who do they call? Uh, Discount Nutrition Center, 813-528-8677. 8677, and ask for Smoke Dog? Ask for Smoke Dog. Okay, but... Isn't he dreamy, girl? Mm -hmm. <laughs> if we were driving by Smoke Dog in our cars, what would our horn say? Toss my salad? Come, 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 come. Smoke Boy, you've been out of it. Smoke Dog and Dog. All right, when, uh, before we went to break, there was a gentleman who uh, was from Savannah. We were off the air in Savannah for a few weeks over some kind of protest. Um, and he did not know what tossing the salad meant. So when we've said this, you know, we've we've talked about it on the air after after that HBO prison special. You, BL, mm -hmm. from Hooters on the radio, yeah. are most experienced in this field. If you would, <laughs> if you would describe in a very genteel way what tossing the salad means. All right, from my observations. <laughs> Your close-up observations from an inch away. Oh, it's called experience, BS. Yeah, not observation. Stay out of this often. Thank you. I got words for you. Yes, yes. Uh, okay, two inmates, if you will, uh -huh. when they want to enjoy pleasure. Right. <laughs> pleasure principle. Uh -huh. uh, they're gonna, uh, they will, one inmate will be the receiver, uh -huh. obviously. Of? Of the... Of the Salad tossing. Exactly. Which entails what? It entails uh, several things. Actually, you could use uh, a bowl full of jelly. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Sandra. But, but that is just placed <laughs> there. In the, in the area, the back door area. Right. And then the other person would remove the jelly or whatever it is. With, yes, with their uh, mouth. Have you, okay. Have you ever, and you said no before, but you winked, have you ever tossed a man or woman's salad. I swear on my unborn children. I've already sworn on the baby Jesus. It's the Lance I've given up Coca-Cola. You've given up tossed salad for 40 days. <laughs> you had days, a token and I know of yesterday, B.L. <laughs> oh. That was grandfather. All right, thank you for that description. Uh, Iris? Hello, this is Iris. Oh. Hi, Iris. How are you? God, I'm a long-time listener, first-time caller. Uh, we, really? Uh, we've heard you on the air before. What's up, Iris? I love the Hooter girls. They're great girls. Lynn. 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 Lynn, Iris wants to talk to you. Hi, Iris. And Bill. Hey, it's not I... Bill, it's BL. You still I... alive? I missed you girls on the on the machine in the living room. The Victrola. That's called the radio. Yes, the Victrola. Uh-huh. And I can't hear you. Well, they're back. They'll be back in a month. They'll be Why back on the air. talking? Go ahead. Speak to Iris. I? Iris? Yes. How's your husband, Sheldon? Very good. We were listening to the Rob and Rob show. <laughs> Ron and Ron, Iris. And as you know, they're pretty anally uh, uh, obsessed every day tossing salad. <laughs> and we tried it yesterday. You and Sheldon? Oh, God. Yes. He who tossed who's? He basically tossed about a... Bail of hay there, Rob. Oh, God. I literally had a bail of hay. Uh, that's so disgusting to think about. And, uh, well, the pitchfork is what really annoyed me. Uh, did uh, you toss his in return? I actually, what I did was bold. <laughs> he laid there, and I set up ten pins, and I picked up the seven ten. <laughs> the split. The split. Oh, hello, Fez. 
Hello, Iris. You know, it's a wonderful thing to hear all the girls back on the box again. Isn't okay. it? Uh-huh. They're all wonderful. Yes, they are very pretty, they're very talented, and they're back on the air in a month. I was afraid that O.J. killed them. No, O.J. did not kill them. Uh, the only one that knew O.J. of the three is Julie Williams, and uh, you knew him briefly, right? Yeah, I mean, I knew him as well. Lynn also has met O.J. as well as B.L. Oh, really? Yeah, O.J. had a thing for B.L. And what happened? And what thing was that? Where was it hanging? <laughs> did you kiss him? No, no, it was, she did not reciprocate. He kissed you? No, you know what happened? What? Hang, Iris, one second. We were in Los... <laughs> Rude. I love to hear you talk. You were in Los Angeles? Yeah, we were in Los Angeles at a restaurant, and O.J. was getting eye contact with me, major eye contact. Right. And then the people we were with said, don't go there, girl. You they know, they warned you. They warned me. They said how how how, uh, how recent was it or how close was it to the murders? This was in '93. Did you leave your glasses behind? <laughs> Good thing you didn't. Did you, did you see when you saw when you saw the look in his eye, in his eyes? Did you think he could be a murderer? In your own eyes. <laughs> in your own eyes. Did you think he could be a murderer? You know what's oh, weird, weird. Diaz? What? I sit and think. I sit and think back, and I don't even know why I was staring at him. He had a deep, cold, hard stare. Like a shark. Yeah. Like a shark, like he was sucking me in. Ooh, sucking your energy. <laughs> wow. You exactly. want to suck. I'll have what she's having. <laughs> she was having salad. <laughs> With extra croutons. <laughs> All right, Iris. Well, thanks for calling and welcoming the girls back. And I'll be listening for the new radio box. Okay. okay. And I'll, I'll listen to it. Okay. <laughs> Thank okay. you, Iris. We'll see, Iris. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye, Iris. Hello, Warren. Yeah. Yeah, you're on the air. Uh, yeah, the uh, basketball player who's a version, it's not A.C. Green, it's uh, Michael Cooper. Are you sure? I'm positive. Michael Cooper, who used to play with the Lakers and now is an assistant coach with the Lakers. Right. Okay, thanks. Uh, have you heard of the story, girls? Yes, I have. Michael Cooper is, uh, whatever he is, 33, 36 years old, however old he is, has never once had sex in his entire life. With another person? Right. I'm sure he's run batches, but he has never had sex his entire life. Well, you see, these girls hear a story about a virgin. They think it's science fiction. <laughs> they can't imagine. You know, I... I Isn't I, that hard to imagine an NBA player who... It's hard you know, to imagine. It makes you feel like he's twisted a little bit. You right? think? Yeah. Remember Barry Sanders from the Detroit Lions who would do those PSAs about not uh, having premarital sex? And mm -hmm. then he had a child out of wedlock, so he was a definite hypocrite. Yeah. Well, this Michael Cooper, if it is Michael Cooper, I don't know what it is. I thought it was Kevin uh, Johnson from the Suns, and then somebody else said it was A.C. Green. But in any case, it's an NBA player who has never had sex. I, I wouldn't want to be the first on that recipient. Well, how long do you think it would take? Four or five seconds, <laughs> tops. The build-up. <laughs> oh, yeah, the back. Well, he's not saying he hasn't been batching. Uh, maybe he hasn't even been batching. I don't know. I, I didn't. I didn't see the report. I think it was 2020 or one of those type shows. But maybe he hasn't even been batching. Maybe it's some religious belief he has. It's, oh, is that what he said? Or maybe he has a problem with the unit. Maybe it's dead. Maybe, like, yeah, uh, maybe, maybe Bob Dole's arm. Right. Maybe he has no feeling. Maybe he has a pen attached to the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> Felt tip. Oh, hello, Jim. You're on the air. Mahabom, my brother. Mahabom. Hey, Ronnie B., first I'd like to apologize to you for the uh, death threats and uh, the bad notes and the phone calls and stuff. But hey, we had it coming. I'm, I'm just, I was so upset when you let the girls go. Julie, B.L., Lynn. Blood, let me, let me explain something to you. I never let the girls go. I know. That was not my call. A Spaniard kind of got the brunt of my calls. Uh, yeah, I know. I took a lot of death threats. <laughs> but, uh, I, Were you the guy outside with the bullhorn protesting? Well, the, I, yeah. yeah, that guy, the guy marching back and forth. Right. Uh, Every day he'd be outside the building with a bullhorn and a uh, big sign. Big yeah. Sign. I just missed my girls. That's all. Well, I don't here's blame the you. girls. I'm glad to hear them back on the radio, and I'm really looking forward to having their own show. Uh, is the show going to change at all? Uh, yeah, we're going to make it funny. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it does. Hello, Eric. Yeah. Yeah, you're on. Okay. Hey, I want to. I want the iPad computers every day on my way to. The class, mm -hmm. and I just wanted, and I write, and I just wanted the opportunity to toss a girl salad with something I write. Yeah, that's from six to eight uh, p.m. every uh, Tuesday night. Toss salad with a fast short Hooters. Something for kids. Forty after this. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Yesterday we were blessed by uh, Father Pesci, 
who on Ash Wednesday blessed this show. And what you heard before that was the Hooters theme song. They returned to the radio in one month, the Hooters on the Radio Girls. We'll have them bless your show, too. Cool. That's a nice thing for a priest to do. And Ashley, is not her normal self. No, she's not as bubbly as normal. Why are you she's, shy, Betsy? But you know what? You look very refreshed and clean, scrubbed uh, <laughs> girl <laughs> next door. Oh, the pap smear came back. Let me nice. see what this ring is you're wearing. No. Engagement? You, I heard you're getting that way. You get engaged? Oh, oh, you are engaged? I'm very happy, but I'm not any of that. Who Billy do? Williams, is she engaged? She is not. Is that Cowboy? Engaged. No. no. <laughs> Cowboy's married now. Cowboy's the one I was in the van wreck with. Oh. Uh, where I lost my finger. Remember him? Yeah. How could we forget? Because I, I would see him a lot of times, and uh, he would always ask about you. Oh, we're, you know, we're cordial. Okay. okay. He still wants the bone, but he <laughs> married somebody else. Ron Diaz is like the dad and when you have a high school daughter. <laughs> he's like ten boyfriends behind. Never can keep up. Well, you guys are fast moving. I was so uncomfortable because he's saying to Lynn, you know, I met Dutch's wife. She is a doll. Oh, she is the sweetest she was person. To me. Yeah, but, you know, this is her life. You met somebody in the hallway. Mm-hmm. Lynn's going, Arr. No. I did not. I said yes. I totally agree. <laughs> you... They are perfect for each other. You know, I, I see Lynn Austin. I see a little of the Heidi Fly smoothie from last time. <laughs> she could have been Heidi. You could have been. I don't get it. I didn't see it. Yeah, you could have been someone, Lynn. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Pat, you're on the air. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I've got some information on the NBA player that doesn't or that hasn't had sex. Okay, who is it? That is AC Green. And why are people saying it's either Kevin Johnson or uh, Michael Cooper? I don't know. I uh, I went to Oregon State University with AC Green the same year as he did. Uh -huh. No wonder he took off in that Bronco. Yeah, He's he so did. frustrated. That's you know, AC Cowley. He was oh. like that at Oregon State. In between classes, he'd be in the middle of the quad preaching. You know, no sex. And really? Oh, yeah. So it's, he's been doing this, uh, he's been going with this gig his whole career. Oh, yeah. It's Oregon. a great way to pick up chicks. <laughs> yeah. In college, he was, uh, you know, he was the, obviously the star player at, at Oregon State. Right. So everybody had, uh, but know, the, but, And the chicks would come flocking to him oh and he would God. say no. There'd be hundreds of people just standing around listening to him, and I'd walk by thinking, what in the world is this guy talking And let's uh, be honest, A.C. Green is not exactly the best-looking man in the and NBA. And I tell you, you know, it's one thing you decide what to do with your life, but you don't go out and scream that. I don't have sex with anybody! Or I don't come, care! I don't get wood! I'd come, have to jack Ruby his ass. It'll be just like uh, what happened to Barry Sanders. He'll get caught in some weird situation, and he'll, he'll look like the hypocrite he may be. Hey, Bill, you're on. Bill, you there? Yeah. Go ahead, you're on. Hey, I wanted to talk to you all about uh, the live gig in Savannah. Yes, it's coming up uh, probably in a month or so. Did you find a fighter yet? Uh, Jeff Apeloff is going to fight. He can't wait to get back in the ring. I don't know who he's going to fight. Uh, Ryan the beer guy, Ronnie. Ronnie, where's your guy? Because yesterday I heard that uh, your fighter uh, wanted to cheese out and didn't want to fight. Who? Apeloff? I'll be there. Apeloff or Ryan the beer guy? Ryan the beer guy. Oh, uh, I've talked to Ryan. He was a little nervous at first. You know, going up against the champ, but then I, I, he said, anything for the show. So, the show uh, comes first. hopefully, uh, the attitude that Apeloff had yesterday, where he couldn't wait to get back in the ring, will continue. He loves the fight game, and I think it happened in that sixth round of the last live gig when he opened up Malibu Mo. He saw the blood, and I saw the lust in his eyes, just knowing that he could hurt another person oh, like sure. that. Oh, sure. I mean, when he saw the blood, it was like Apeloff was alive for the first time. Right. You could see in his eyes, this is what I live for. Mm -hmm. This is my game. This is my love. Hello, Mike. Hey, how's it going, guys? Good, buddy. Um, I'm willing, more than willing to fight Apple off. I, um, I met BL in the doctor's office uh, about three months ago. I don't know if she was clinic. Or not. Uh huh. Do you remember this Penicillin guy? Penicillin shot? Seven days antibiotic? Uh, no, Mike, what did we do I there? <laughs> You're Dr. Seeing the Salad. Doctor. You were seeing the doctor because you're uh, for your scapula, and I had my broken hand. And we were sitting next to each other talking. Oh, your scapula—that's the broken bone from my collar. Right. And right. it wings out about nine inches in the back. It still. Almost, it looks like a breast in the back of my back. It still it, uh, does. It's great for Hooters. <laughs> Big wing hanging out. Move it to the front where there's nothing. You haven't had that fixed, deal? Uh, no, I'm still, uh, I'm still uh, beaten up. I'm still wounded. That's amazing. And that car accident was over a year ago. Mm -hmm. And you know, these settlements take so long, and the doctors always want, obviously, to get paid, and yet you can't get the uh, 
the insurance companies to take care of it until the settlement's finished. Oh, yeah, I'm all bounded up. That with sucks. bills and, oh. Yeah, it sucks. Hit by a drunken driver. Yep. That's why we tell you kids, don't drink and drive and don't smoke crack. It's bad for you. What's happening to the guy who hit you? He's already been in jail, out of jail. Had a so ta salad toss. <laughs> I heard that he got in trouble for uh, drinking and driving on a bicycle. Really? <laughs> Hit, I heard. Hit the curb and went right through the window of the liquor store. What a loser. Hello, uh, Barbara. Hi. Hi, you're I'm on here. I can't operate a pair of Nikes, let alone a vehicle. <laughs> Go ahead, you're on. This is your friendly neighbor from Safety Harbor, and a lot of people are really looking forward to listening to you girls on the radio. And are you allowed to say that you're going to be on 760 AM? Well, you were. Mm, yeah, I guess we can. Hello, Tom, you're on. I guess we can. Tom? Hello. Yes, you're on. Sorry Go about that. Yeah. Hey, uh, just, uh, I was at the live gig first time I'd ever been to one. What'd you think? Oh, it was, really, it was great. The only bad thing about the live gig was um, you need a bigger place. Yeah, I know. Big yeah. place. Anyway, hey, the it was line, packed. Y'all got big time, but I, I enjoyed it. We had a hell of a time. Good. The reason why I called was you were talking about A.C. Green earlier. Uh, on the opposite end of the spectrum from that, I don't know if you remember, uh, three, four, five years ago maybe, James Worthy was in a Houston, called what he thought was an escort service, and it turned out to be the police running the sting, and they busted him for prostitute or pant. Or I remember that. I remember James Worthy of the Lakers. Yeah, he thought he was calling an escort service, and it was a sting operation, and he got busted for uh, soliciting. Not soliciting. These things happen, you know, and you know, uh, like you see on the back of cop cars about that 1-800-something dope? Yeah, turn in a pusher or something. Don't think that you can call there and buy dope. <laughs> no, of course not. I found that out 3 o'clock in the morning one night. Hey, there was a guy who actually... That is really... You know, they ought to change that number. Hi, I saw your ad. <laughs> what are you holding? I'm needing. <laughs> Lag it up. There was a guy who um, <laughs> wanted to sell crack so bad and needed the money. He actually was outside a police station and in, to a uniformed officer asked him if he wanted to buy any crack. The cop obviously busted him. Well, he thought he was a mailman. <laughs> and those guys got to walk all day. <laughs> hey, Through the rain, the sleep. Bill, you're on. Go ahead. Talk like that on the air. Uh, Bill was asking why he got busted for... For what? For some crap. He didn't use the word crap. I don't know what Bill got busted. Bill, for, maybe that's why you were arrested. I don't think. Uh, we're going to let you go, Bill, explain. because you can't talk like that, especially when we have the girls here. The beautiful girls on the radio. The radio. Saying that. Uh, Scott. I'm hearing that kind of language. Scott, you're on. Go ahead. Scott, are you there? Okay, we'll see you, Scott. Uh, John, go ahead. You're on. Hey, John. Hey, just glad to have the girls back. The girls are back in town. They're back, bad, and ready to go. I just got the 60 a.m. ready. Okay. So, uh, we're, allowed, we're allowed to say 760 or wherever the hell they're going to be. We have, we have uh, from the NBA. The uh, Charlotte Hornets? The Charlotte Hornets. The big man who is very good friends with Julie Williams, Matt Geiger. Matt. What's going on, Ron? Buddy, long time. That guy got Wow. How are you? Who's in that studio? It's the girls. Who ain't? <laughs> Julie Williams is in here, and she was saying that she needed her salad toss. <laughs> and who she better than Matt Geiger to do it? has been a long time. <laughs> the last salad Matt Geiger toss was Muggsy Bogues. <laughs> <laughs> oh Little Muggsy? Little Muggsy. How's it going in the NBA, man? Pretty good, man. Has, has, have you and Shaq uh, sh shaken hands and, you know, the pass of the pass? No, actually, uh, when we played him last time, he wasn't. Uh, he wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> not, well, uh, what, Andre? All I all I saw was you trying to give him a high five. Exactly. You know, it was a, it was a foul. Hey, fouls happen in the NBA. That's what I said. You know, you got to mix it up. Hey, did you see the the shot Ronnie Cycli took the other day? No. Punched to the face, bleeding badly. It looked like that college that college fight the other day. Really? You know, Ronnie Cycli's got that I'm Vinny Testaverde's brother look. He about. really does. So how's things, with, how's things with the Hornets? How do you like playing in Charlotte? Pretty good, man. It's a, real, it's, a, it's a good opportunity for me. I've been playing pretty well this season, so uh, we've won four straight. So. Hey, do you miss... Julie, B.L., Blynn, what's going on, girls? Do you miss, hey. do you miss the girls? Yeah, I really do. I can't wait. When are you going to be back in Florida? Uh, well, the season ends in uh, April, and then we get the playoffs. Right, yo, so you're already banking on the playoffs. And on Monday night was the big 28-point night. I was going crazy. Right. Yeah. 
You know, I think if I was another foot and a half taller, Ronnie. <laughs> you would have made it. A little more gut, a no, little more desire. No, I would just be taller and lazy. <laughs> We won the game last night, too. We played the Washington Bullets, so we're uh, 26 and 25 now. Nice. Wow. Over 500 beating the Bullets, who are soon to be called something else. <laughs> They're going to change their name. They're not going to be the Washington Bullets anymore. Oh, right. They're going to be the uh, Washington Say No to Crack. We nice to each other <laughs> and, uh, you know, collect the peace. So, Matt, yeah. um, what's happening next for you? you who are you going to shove out of the way? Who are you going to hit? Julie Williams. <laughs> No, uh, we play uh, play the Washington again uh, Friday in Washington, so uh, we have a little practice this morning. And then we All right, well, you know, Matt, you you and Julie Williams, you always seem to be so perfect together. What went wrong? What happened to love? Girl, nothing. She's uh, she's a very nice girl, and I really had a good time. And uh, nice girl, nice family. She's a hooker. Julie, would you would you like to say something nice to Matt Geiger from the Charlotte Hornets? Hi, Matt. Have you been following the four game win streak? Yeah. Did you know about the 28-point performance? I did not. No. Come on, keep up with the man's career. That's wonderful. Thanks, sweetheart. He's in North Carolina, and you can see him from here. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Wave your hand, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. All right, Matt, we'll be watching you on TV, man, and good luck with the Hornets and the rest of the season. Hope to see you in the playoffs. Sounds cool. All right, All right. Take care. Matt Geiger from the Charlotte Hornets and the NBA, and this is only appropriate, Julie, than you and Matt sing this song together as you're reunited. Matt Geiger and Julie. It's and you. Come aboard, won't you? Come aboard. Watch out, Jack. Oh. We're expecting you. 57 after this is the Ron Ron Radio Network. The Ron Ron Show back on this Thursday morning. The Hooters girls have joined us. A lot of faxes coming in from them. Or for them, not from them, unless they're going in the other room during the break, <laughs> setting in their own faxes. Well, let me now, tell you, Now, these things are written. What? What do you want to mm -hmm. tell me? I'd like to just say I'm looking forward to uh, coming back to the listeners for you and those uh, other states that don't know about me. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, BL. <laughs> uh, rather popular with the Hooters show for a while. <laughs> you won in New Hampshire last night, didn't you? <laughs> hey, can you believe Buchanan won? That's scary, man. And I love it. And now the Republican Party is just rallying to try and squish this campaign. Right. There's yes. no way he's going to be elected president. Well, they but if that's who the party wants, if that's who the party voters want, they, well, they, they, they want him out. The, the other two moderate guys are, you know, dividing up the votes. they got to get either Dole or uh, that other Hammond out he, of there. And he's got two places where he's probably going to win his next two primaries. One is in South Carolina, the other in Arizona. Well, next Arizona has a 1% black population, so he'll obviously kick ass there. He's sure South to sweep Florida. Yeah, Florida. And I don't know about Florida. Florida loves him. I don't he did think well so. in Florida last time around. But he will win South Carolina with that whole uh, Bible Belt thing. Coming up uh, next Tuesday is Arizona, which is the biggie, and then and the then, two Dakotas. And then he goes and then into the South, South. Carolina. Uh, hello, Mandy. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Um, I just wanted to tell BL and Julie that um, the alternative lifestyle listeners of the female gender um, are just ecstatic about the fact that they're going to be back on the radio. You're big That's with the lesbos. Great. The lesbian community loves you guys. The lesbos guys. demo goes crazy. That's it's great, goes. Mandy. But, man, I, I've died and gone to heaven. I just spent all my, my pub friction money on hold here on my cell phone, but it's well worth it. Way to go, Denise. So that um, we, we are think? ecstatic. We uh, have not had anybody to listen to or to call into. All yeah. right. Thank you, Mandy. And the girl There has the been a the hole. There has been a hole. Literally. Um, in, uh, there will be again. <laughs> in Salt Lake City, they are now seeking to block gay and lesbian students from having on-campus club meetings. So they've gotten rid of all the clubs. All the clubs are gone just because some of the clubs were gay or le gay and lesbian clubs. Oh. So all clubs are banned in Salt Lake City schools. Now this is high school? Uh, yes. I believe it is, yes. The Salt Lake City School Board. We had a gay club in our school. It was called the Drama Department. <laughs> Same thing. Uh, the board voted four to three last night to ban all groups such as chess and ski clubs from its campuses. The move is designed to prevent gay and lesbian groups from meeting with school sanctioning. 
Okay. There's it's no 1996. Le- Come on. No lesbian clubs, but they will continue ladies' basketball. <laughs> Where's the common sense? And this is not a point. You got a point there. And this Bubba is the, Louis. the Mormon state where you can marry more than one woman. Yes, Ronnie, but those two women can't turn around and kiss each other. Isn't that weird? Because God's watching. Hello, uh. You know, I'm a Latter day Saint. What is a Latter day Saint? Is that, how does that uh, we differ believe, from a Seventh day Adventist? Oh, it was just, just, you know, it was a long name like that one, but we're totally different. And a Christian we believe scientist. that Jesus also showed up to the Indians. Mm-hmm. So we got that Bible. We got the Apache. Jesus was an Apache angle. I kind of like that. And, uh, was later scalped mm. for our sins by Wild Bill Pilot. He was scalped for our sins. Hello, Dave, you're on the and air. And then, three days later, he arose. Mm. The teepee is empty. And it was good. Dave? Hey, fellas, how you doing? Good, buddy. What's up? Oh, man, I'm upset. You guys have got to pick up the new Sports Illustrated. These idiots have done it again. The, right now. the jinx? It's cover article on Rick Pitino. Oh. The, the, the jinx, the SI jinx, man. Not only do they jinx us, but they absolutely tear Patino to shred. Why? Really? The man has done such a great job for Kentucky. These idiots have no clue what they're talking They talk about his baby son that died. They you know, I, I have been hating Sports Illustrated for a while because of some of the angles of their stories. Getting far away from sports. Yeah, getting far away from sports and um, mean-spirited and attack pieces. What, what are they talking about with the kid? They talk about the fights that he and his wife have had. Stuff that has nothing to do with sports. Say that he's crazy. It's like Psychology Illustrated. I know. I, it really is. Just a few weeks ago, they had the... Uh, athletes who are uh, be- uh, wife beaters. Right. I mean, you know, sure, that belongs in sub-publication, but I don't want to read it in SI. And it's the thing stupid. is, he showed up when they wrote their last article on us when we went on probation. Had nothing but terrible things to say. Sports Illustrated hadn't stepped foot in Lexington for seven years. Now that we're about to win our sixth national championship, they come back and try and dog Patino. And Patino yeah, has yeah. done such a great job. Oh, an incredible job. You know, I'm canceling my Sports the Illustrated. the first damn about Sports Illustrated. All right, I'm canceling buddy, mine. You know, it's I, done. I'm I, going to Inside Sports. And, and, I, 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 video. I, and I look forward to Thursdays when it comes in the mail. Mm. Read it cover to cover. You still, Ronnie, until it turns into this uh, it really, and, and, you know, they gossipy have, rag. And they also have ecological issues in there. Yeah, I'm a, you know, mm. I'm an environmentalist, but I don't want to read about it in SI. I don't want to read about golf. I don't want to read about tennis. I don't want to read about horse racing. Do you want to read the article about Big Blue against the... Uh, about chess? Chess <laughs> in SI. Come on, man. Uh, what about girls' tennis? You want to read uh, the cover God. story on that? I can't even read about men's tennis. You know? Yeah. And they have... Go- all right, sure. College basketball. Women can play college basketball. Yeah. I'm, it's, it's, I'm all for it. Yeah. I don't want to read about it, though. Right. I don't know none of these women's it's a, names. It's a mass other than publication. Re- other than Rebecca Lobo, I don't know any other woman. Here's what I say, honey. If right, you're such a good basketball player, try to put on a G-string and see if you can't make the cover. <laughs> if not, shut up. Or play in the NBA. I know. I, mean, I don't know. There's something about a woman that's six eight that just I don't know. Turns you on. Yeah. Hello. Uh, a little. Not Kevin. Salt Lake. Kevin, go ahead. Hey, I called yesterday. Mm-hmm. That one guy was. And what? Remember the boxer. Yeah, Appleoff. You called him a wuss. Remember I Oh, yeah, you're the kid. Yeah. yeah. I don't like it. Do you ever have a uh, school kid? What? Or did you, did you drop you out? To school? You want any of these latchkey kids? Oh, no, not really. What Good. are you, crack baby? <laughs> no. Get to school and don't listen to the show. You're too young, but thanks anyway, Kevin, all right? Hey, we'll see. All right, and, we'll see. and Kevin, don't smoke crack. Yeah. That goes for all you young people. Do yeah. not smoke crack. Hello, Jim, you're on the air. Because you don't know when someone's going to come on superhuman strength for a crane off your legs. That's PCP. Go ahead, Jim. How you guys doing? Hey, good. Got an idea for you. You know how you uh, are rocking along on the show and all of a sudden somebody will call up and ask a question that you've answered 400 times? Right. Yeah, I hate that. Well, I figure they're either new listeners or they're not, you know, maybe completely there. No, they're not hip enough. So I was thinking maybe you could come up with like a guidebook, you know, Ron and Ron for beginners and idiots. Right, okay, so like they would that. know exactly what we're talking about when we say something like running a batch, tossing the salad, right. pops, things like Wait, that. Wait, what's that mean, tossing the salad? <laughs> I don't want to get into that. I, that's a great idea, Jim. Hang on, okay? You know, we, uh, Send them a pup friction video for being there, hip. There's like a bootleg thing of our webs, uh, of a website called Ron and Ron Bootleg. Really? That what? somebody set up on their own. I'm trying to find it. But I heard about it from some people. Let's check it out. stuff about our show. Hello, uh, Harold, you're on. 
Yeah, I just wanted to uh, hear BL say "son of a bitch" is one time to hold me over for a month. I'm jonesing for it. Go ahead, okay. BL. Ah, uh, son of a bitch, and <laughs> listeners better be ready for us in a month. We're coming back. All right, there you go. What's the uh, plans for the new show? What's the angle? Topical. What? You know, it's really going to be cool. or Cosmo it, or, on the air. Or is it, advice? is it an advice column? Is it like a Dear Abby thing? You know, it's going to be really Is it cooking? It's everything, Diaz. Anything you want. We're going to be You hot. haven't thought about it yet, have you? No, I've been. <laughs> oh, no. We've been planning big stuff. We've got a producer tell this us time. Some. All right, tell us some of the uh, upcoming Who's shows. Who's your producer? Who's the first, what's the first show about? Uh, the first uh, uh Welcome back. I'm glad you've been planning. Well, we'll get through welcome back calls for that day, right? All right. Oh, yeah. So, in other words, That's it's going to be just leaning on the listeners. <laughs> no, we're just kidding. Carry <laughs> us. You're going to have to wait and see, but it's going to be neat things, authors with books this time, self-help. Authors with books? Oh. As opposed to authors that haven't written a thing? Uh, How radical. Because we're all authors that haven't written a thing, yeah. really. I am. I got a book up here, Ronnie, in my mind. And if you're gonna if you're going to interview authors... Please don't let what happened with Richard Preston and Julie. That's going to be our first step. Richard Preston? Yeah. You know, we ought to make you uncomfortable by playing that. No. We played it oh, yesterday. Please, please no. don't. She yes, we will. We will. She we will. She we will. Bonnie, when we come back. Bad. When we come Chuck back. Feel bad. Put the headphones on, turn the them up best. real loud, and have Paulo kissing you Look, as you're He's licking the window for an hour. I had to stick him in the other room. Paulo, don't I be I had to put him in the mutt room. Do you want to come in here? No, he can't. He, he keeps yeah. looking at him. He's been licking a window. All right, Julie, when we come back, we're going to relive, relive, revisit your interview with the author from the book The Hot Zone, Richard Preston, okay? i got to go screw things in my eyeballs. <laughs> real quick. Relax. Get away. This is the Ron and Ron Radio Network. It is a Thursday morning. Tomorrow, Whitey's going to be in the studio with some documentation he claims uh, about blacks having eight to ten more muscles in their lower back and about different brain sizes. Uh, who do we he's have? Reaching. He is Finally just reaching the for truth. He's crazy. He's, the man doesn't know what he's talking about. Uh, also on the show uh, tomorrow... There's two broads. Oh, yes. Scandalous. Scandalous. Appearing at the uh, dollhouse. Scandalous. Fantasy the, Ranch. At the Fantasy Ranch next to the Ron dollhouse. Ron Diaz's. It's <laughs> not ranch. my Fantasy Ranch. I've been there once. And that was to MC a boxing match. There he is, oh, ladies God. and gentlemen. The picture of Ron Diaz. Please don't show me that anymore. At the world's How many do you largest have? triple X party. Those players that was are Super Bowl Thirty. That was Super Bowl Thirty party, and that's why I was there. That and a boxing why match. Why the three X? That's Super Bowl Thirty Roman numerals, and that's Roman where numerals. this and, is America. And that's where we found K.O. Kimmy, who boxed at our last live gig. Okay, oh, so you so can act like it's yeah, a positive scouting thing. thing. You're doing gyno rooms, right? I was not in the gyno room. I didn't step foot in the gyno room. Okay, fine. No, seriously. Okay, I believe you. You, hey, you don't believe me. Let me, let me tell you, right? What? You could shoot a cop. I'm still your best friend. I'm not going to judge you by what you do. Then why do you end? keep showing me that picture? I thought you would like to see my picture. No, I don't want to see it anymore. Those Please. tires are in the third printing. And I keep, I keep tearing them up, and you keep coming Fez, up with more. Fez is in there, and he doesn't complain. Oh, no. I love it. What am I running for Congress? No, <laughs> I'm with Bobby Diaz. Diaz. Seriously, <laughs> Ronnie. Then you have Spivey in the stirrups. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I may be a, a, a lot of things, scumbag included, but I ain't going that way, girl. Hey, I, let me All tell right. you something. I was I watched that Tuong Fu movie, and I swear it was Spivey. <laughs> he was gussying up everything. You know how when Spivey shows up at a party and brings food and uh -huh. changes everything? That's the, the whole movie was about. I was just sitting there going... This That's is a Spivey show. <laughs> it's like watching this freaking end commercial. <laughs> 18 after. Uh, before we went to break, Julie insisted that we Not play... Not that it. a bad thing. <laughs> that, Julie insisted that we play her interview because on the, on the new Hooters Why, show... Why, Julie? They're going to be uh, um, talking to a lot of authors. I got some... Every time I see Paulo, I feel like I have something in my fur. mouth. I yeah, think. fur. Just it gives you a furry taste in your mouth. Uh, like oh, you just man. look... Like you just licked a muskrat. I know. It's disgusting to like look at you. Like somebody drained a 91-pound fist into your mouth. It's psychological. But just looking at you, I have to floss. Um, what but, would you rather do? Make out with him or drink cis drainage? Oh. <laughs> While it's still flowing out of the cis. Cis drainage. <laughs> I'd chug it. Look at him right there, laying on his, with his butt up in the air. I would chug the cis fours. drainage instead of making out with him. Pig. 
Um, uh, Julie Williams, because of the new Hooters show yeah. coming back. She's a good interviewer. And she wants to make sure that this show is uh, very uh, author intense. Right. Where they talk to a lot of people that have written books. It's uh, author friendly. Author friendly. And this is uh, an interview that Julie did. It's almost going to be called the book nook. The, uh, Richard, the author of Hot Zone, Richard Preston. This is an incredible story. It's from the. It's about the Ebola virus and a guy who has been to Africa repeatedly. He goes to the cave where he thinks that. this virus started. Uh, Mount he Kittim. He doesn't know about Africa. I think it's Julie's Mount been Kittim. there. Uh, while this is going on, Paulo, come on over here, crawl over. During the break, Julie Williams agreed to let you lick her shoes but only. Only if the, the interview was hey, complete. Hey. Only the shoe, not the ankle, no bare skin. Not the ankle. Not the ankle. Put the boots on. Put the boots on, Fezzy. If you follow just the shoe. Okay, let's listen to the interview. Julie Williams and the author of The Hot Zone, Richard Press. They, they may not have enough equipment. I've, I've heard reports that they're now out of fuel and they only have one vehicle. Oh, jeez. It yeah. doesn't matter. We're okay. You're going to be okay. Uh, no. The thing is, the people who get Ebola, they, they bleed out really fast. As oh. Yes, as you know. Mm -hmm. I don't believe it. It doesn't matter. In what? Africa, it does not matter. It's going to spread. Those people, when I land, I lived in Africa for three months. Uh -huh. It doesn't matter. When you land in Africa, you have men in wheelchairs pretending that they're quadriplegic. What does that have to do with anything? Because, because she had a farm. They can pick up Africa. women. Uh -huh. They can pick up women, men, whatever. It all. It doesn't matter. You can go to a market in in Africa, like you were the, the Bahamas. Yeah. For example, you go to the, the uh, straw market in the Bahamas. Right. You'd be shopping for whatever. Right. Those marketeers there would like, you know, pawn you off a purse, a basket, whatever. You go to Africa, it's the same thing. Right. They'll pawn you off something. Yeah. Richard, They'll buy Richard, it. Hold on. Richard, this woman has had a lot to drink this morning, and I know <laughs> she's making no sense to you or us. So let's I, forget about the Bahamian straw market if we could. I We're swear. We're talking to the guy who wrote the but hot zone. Saying, not, but not the it's same. not the same. It's the same thing. Is it sex, though, that you can get No, to? it's... You can go to any market or bar experience. Are you saying like a singles bar? <laughs> sure. They have those in Africa. I went to them. Richard, you, I had a think, farm in Africa. Do you think there's maybe something mental going on with the Ebola in the mind of this woman? <laughs> the African queen. And doesn't that, does, and it does affect the mind. Well, it does. You become I got a, a fever. Yeah, I'll tell you that right now. The thing about Africa is... The flavor of a Pringles? The thing about Africa is what? <laughs> the thing about Africa is that there are a lot, there's a lot of stuff going around Africa right now. Yeah, huh? the, yeah, from the right. straw markets. The people are... Uh, you know, the people just say, oh, it's another one. You know, it's another bath. Yeah. So they don't... They're scared to death. They're uneducated. <laughs> they're, they don't feel it's a big deal. Well, no, they're scared to death. They don't, they don't care. No, they do not care. All right, Richard. I, I can tell you, Richard. I was there, Richard. Right Zaire, who are dying with Dick, Dick. Dick. Richard. Hey, Richard, she's drunk. The hospitals to do the best they can. I know. Dick. I'm sure. Please, Dick, going I was back there. into the hospitals to die. No, so I don't care. You better care because if, it, if you don't care, no, I you. care for my own personal safety. <laughs> but Dick. As far as I'm concerned, I was there. I saw it. People don't care. White, black. Really? What do you mean they don't care? No, they, they don't. Care. Go to Africa. He's been, no, 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 no. He's been to Africa. So am I. West. Okay. Hello. Go. No. You were I don't there care. as a drunk college student. This guy no, I was got a not. PhD. I was not drunk. Okay. I swear to God. I've I was in Africa. More I was in Africa for three months okay. straight. Never right. had Richard. one. This, she's uh, a guest that we have, <laughs> no. that we've had doing shots Funny, every I'm hour on the air. I know, but this guy has got the number one yeah, book you something. in the country. So what's and happening inside? We're all worried. I was right there, now. I saw it. Let He's talk, writing Julie. as some fake author. It's I was like there as a person. A I, okay, thank you, Richard. You know, <laughs> I'd like to apologize. That's it, we'll never talk to him again. I was there as a real person. <laughs> I swear to God, they don't give a crap about this real people. This interview is over. Who, who doesn't give a crap? And why would you bring up Bahamian straw markets? Because they don't care in the Bahamas. No, we don't care about straw markets. You Nobody don't. cares. This is my favorite thing. He's a fake off. <laughs> He's a fake <laughs> 
You blew any chance we ever had. We I'm talking to the Ebola man again. We he have the number one care. author in the country. I'm he doesn't line. care. He does care. He, we, I don't, what he are you doing? Not. Your hair down. I am telling you, the only person that cares so is somebody who goes to Africa <laughs> and they feel and see Stupid the famine. Bitch. Oh, God, that was embarrassing. Yeah. Number one not book in the me. country. And a really incredible story about the Ebola virus. The Hot Zone was right, the name of the book, and now. Richard Preston uh, was the uh, author that Julie just... Uh, that's the beauty. It, it made no sense. She made no sense to him. That's it, the beauty about the... The Bahamian straw market, it ain't the Bahamas, that's it's the, Africa. That's the beauty about the Hooters girls, Ronnie. They always come up with a different angle right. than <laughs> other interviewers. So this is what we can look forward yeah, to? Yeah, yeah, just keep listening, because we've got lots more of that... Um, you know, energy. and sometimes, though, they can hurt, because I remember uh, one day, Ronnie, this is uh, exactly what happened with... Uh, the Hooters show. Julie, why don't you run down the hall and get Mr. Betty? No, I don't want to talk to him. I hate him. We're fighting. Say that's BL. Pure hate. Hated me. Pure hate. Hate. BL. Hated me. We'll continue with the Hooters girls when we come back. 25 after this. Do you like Paulo better when he drinks or doesn't? I gotta tell you, <laughs> um, they're both interesting. I can see the and they're so opposite. They're polar opposites. It's two different people. It's like Dr. Mongoloid and Mr. Dick. I mean, both of them are annoying characters, both directions that he goes into. This Whoa, one. here he comes, into no. the room and down. He just snagged his head He's got his slack. shoes off, too. Oh, now, the reason he's so drunk is because very early this morning, he came in, relax, don't scream into the mic. He came in this morning wearing a suit <laughs> and very nervous because the Hooters girls are here. And he wanted to impress the Hooters girls. Oh, there he goes. Yet with he, the big claw feet up in the air. Yet he was so nervous that he decided to have a couple of shots. That led to three, four, now ten, twelve shots, which we highly um, are against. Yeah. We, we, we definitely say, please do not. Hello, do shot. not. Don't touch, touch the girls. Up. Don't touch the Hooters girls. You can only kiss the bottom of their shoes. You know, oh, Ross Rebeck just threw him down. Ross, push him down. Ross, Ross you're, you know, you're, you're real tough when you're picking on a drunk. <laughs> yes, I am, Ronnie. <laughs> you're a bouncer. What's going on? What's going on with security? Why did you call security? We're trying to Why? control him. Have, have there been complaints? There's been complaints throughout the building. Okay, right? because he's screaming. He's out of control. All right. <laughs> he's going to be sleeping in your office today. <laughs> Don't touch Ross. He has a nice, clean white shirt on. Was that white, Ronnie? It was earlier. <laughs> uh, uh, BL, if you step on him, you just turn him on. Yeah, don't really. walk on him. You walk on him. Do you want to walk on him? Shot. Paulo, do you want the girls to walk on you? Oh, he's Paulo. licking. Oh, he just licked uh, Ross's crotch. Ah! All the way up to his neck. You know, he licked do the it. bottom hey, of my... Hey. He licked the bottom of my army boot, and I could feel the tongue through my soul. Oh, oh now his boot. big butt crack is hanging right. out of his head. Right. Like... Paulo, let's see if you do. Hey, watch it, man. Paulo, don't steal nothing. Look at the eyes, the craziness in the eyes. He's a mad man. He's just pawing. You know, at, at 9.33, yeah, you want to be so drunk you can't see straight. Fez, would you give him a mic so we can do a movie review? Just what's uh, hot this week, what, Paulo? What's new and hot this week, Paulo? Right there, right there. Paulo, the you were on the air. Be careful. Rumble oh. in the Bronx with Jackie Chan, baby. What is the name of it? Jackie Chan. He's the biggest movie star in the world. Is it a next to Blue Jeff. Can I go for her? Yeah, yeah. Paulo. 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 Oh, he's got Ross. Paulo. Wait, says, Julie! You're a film... Julie! There she Stop. is. Look. Liz, Liz. I want Liz, baby. Look, there she is. There's Liz. Liz. There's Liz. 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 He's trying to rake Reback right now. Come on, stay with him. He has mistaken... Stay with him. He has That's mistaken Reback for now, Lynn Austin. Don't mount him, Ross. Now, Ross, you used a very interesting uh, defense there. You went down <laughs> low and... To get a center of gravity. And it took him up high. I really like that move. You, <laughs> you spun him around. It's the high low move. Yeah. All right, Paulo, please, as a film critic, as an NYU graduate... Here he comes, Ross. Be ready to play your coffee film. in his Please, face. tell us other than that... <laughs> Jackie Chan! Jackie Chan! Jackie Chan! Jackie Chan! Jackie Chan! Jackie, 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 Jackie,
All right, that's it, Ross. Stay low. That's it. You have really thought about the way to take him down. You stay low and you push up and he goes over. It's a balance. <laughs> I love it. Paulo. You could be starting a self-defense course. Can you try to talk to him about doing a movie review? Yes, I propose a toast. Okay. To Jackie Chan. Jackie Chan. Okay. Jackie Chan. Jackie Chan. Jackie Chan. Jackie Chan. Paulo. Paulo. The biggest movie star in the world. Jackie Chan. Paulo, if you continue this behavior, we're calling the cops. Paulo, I want you to drive Chill Ross's out. Ja uh, Jaguar. You're not driving. More beer. You're going into She's Ross's better than office. Julia Roberts. <laughs> Who, Jackie Chan? Jackie Chan is a kick the ass at Julia Roberts. Okay. Yeah, well, she's a slow, quick, loser of a loser. Jackie Chan! A slow, Jackie Chan! Oh, loser. He's got hit with a board. He a loser. Uh, that's a good quote. Maybe, maybe that'll show up in the newspaper under the movie. I tell you, I don't always agree with his views, but I do think Jackie Chan could beat Julia Roberts in a fight. I, a to toast to Jackie Chan. And Jackie then Ross. Chan. Jackie Chan. Ross, if nice. you have to call. Ross, did you notice Fez just used your defense going down low and pushing up high? If you have to call security or the cops, please feel free. Because we just asked him to not mellow to out, not to drink, but the girls from the Hooters on the radio show were going to be on, so he was very nervous. He thought he would take the edge off, and you know how he is. One shot leads to a lot more. <laughs> now, have we uh, behaved ourselves with the girls? I think so. By not bringing up AM6, uh, 760 the whole time? A AM760, WDDM, yeah. we didn't bring up. <laughs> All right, stop. Not the whole time. I mean, we didn't plug it for four hours or We anything. didn't, man. I only heard and you know what? WSUN has treated us... Times. Ross, WSUN has treated us royal, you know that. They have, they have, but I'll tell you something else, Randy. You're never involved in the negotiations, so you don't know all this stuff. And Ross has got to make a play for himself. Yeah. He's got to stand up for himself. I'm a little disappointed in Charlie Kale this morning, too. Who? He's gone. Okay, that's what I meant. All right, uh, Paulo, yeah. sit down. Oh. Sit down. <laughs> Paulo, you have to behave yourself. Well, we have to continue the show. Okay, uh, subdue him. Subdue him, please, with maybe a shot to the head with that board. Okay? I mean, if that's like a what... a dead rabbit? Yeah, if that's what needs to be done. I don't want you to skin him. Don't open him up. Just stun him. Hello, Sam? Yes? Yes. Hi, you're on the air. I'm on? Yes. Oh, oh well... Sorry for the delay. Go ahead. Excuse me? Sorry for the delay. You're on. Go ahead. Oh, I wanted to ask the girl, see, there's... Let me explain my problem. Okay. There's this boy, this man, and he's, he's gorgeous. Uh-huh. I don't know how to tell him that I'm interested in him, and the other problem is, is that my parents... Who live over in California and San Francisco, they don't approve of him because he's black. Okay. Uh, now, are you a man or a woman? I can't. I'm a, I'm a man. Okay. You're a man? Well, I'm a man externally. Okay. Externally. Um, how, how, BL, would she approach her parents and uh, tell this boy that she likes it's him? It's a he. And it's a he, whatever. And uh, tell the parents to accept this. Something's wrong with Paul Lowe. He's giving birth. It don't matter what color the meat is. <laughs> it doesn't matter at all. This isn't, we're not talking Thanksgiving dinner. Huh? I feel exactly. It's just, it's my pain. Hey, Bolo, let go of her leg. I'm I, not, I have to, I have to get, I have to get to him without, with, without getting my parents involved. Okay. How does she get to him without getting the parents involved, B.L.? Like, get to a, what? Like, what? I don't understand. Paul has got my leg. I want him to know I'm interested in him, but. Uh, how, does, how does she approach him? I think, it, I think honesty is the greatest nowadays. I think the more people are being uh, just up front, I think it's working out a lot better. You really think so? I do. All right, I'm in love with a black man. <laughs> that is such what a relief. Relief, huh? You know what I saw yesterday? What? On the bus stop, I saw a white girl and a Mexican tonguing. And I thought, you know, that's America. They don't care. They're just in love. How did They're you know it was a Mexican? Because he was uh, black hair greasy. Not that... I mean... I mean... <laughs> you are such a racist. No, I mean... Unbelievable. Uh, no, that was a nice was day before you got canceled again. And no. greasy. Uh, like, I mean... And you know, well, Charlie K, maybe you should be on the dump button ready to dump us at any moment. No, I mean the Antonio Bandera look, you know? Is, is that greasy? No, Anto Antonio Banderas, you don't dig his look. Oh, and he's from Madrid. He's oh, not Mexican. Spain. Oh, he's a Spaniard. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's different, you know, there's different countries. Don, go ahead, you're on the air. Beale, I can't believe you said that. Go ahead. I say Apollo is much tougher than old Jackie. Look what the old boy's been through. I know. Apollo. Apollo. Come here, Apollo. You have to answer some calls. They bulldogged his legs together with duct tape. <laughs> Yeah, take the mic to him. Take the mic to him. 
<laughs> Boy, you look at Ross over there protecting the corner. He, he gets, I only have so much cord. He gets so violent. Ch right? Hey, Charlie, get off him. Charlie, he gets get off so him. violent. Don't touch anybody from the show, Charlie. Someone get Nurse Ratchet. Paulo. Um, who do you like best of the three Hooters girls? I like Belle, baby! Belle! Who what about Jackie Chan? Who do you like? Who do you like? Give me up, Bill. Bill, give me up. Bill, give me up. Get him up, Bill. Give me up. How many times has she heard that over the years? <laughs> Get me up, Bill. People on. I love Bill. Bill. Give me up, Bill. He's so sweet when he's like this. I know. And you got. Look at him. He's got a. He's got a shrimp coming out of his nose. Bill, pick up Bill. Blow your nose, man. You got to... Hello, hello, Beth. You're on the air. Hello. Hi. Hi, how are you? Okay, I just got to have a complaint. I'm sorry? You have a what? I have a complaint about Gary Spivey. Okay, okay. Call Spivey on the other line. Uh, what's your complaint? Well, you know, I was a believer ever since I um, heard him predict that plane crash. Right, he has predicted a lot of things that have come true. Go ahead. Well, he told me the other day... Yeah. Hey, you're gonna what? With a little girl. That what? That I was pregnant with a little girl. Right. And uh, yesterday I went in for a sonogram. Uh huh. It's definitely not a girl. It's a boy. You saw the unit? I saw it. Okay. Let's get. Maybe that was the cord. No. Or maybe she's a hermaphrodite. <laughs> or maybe it'll get smarter. Look on the bright uh -huh. side. Maybe it's a hermaphrodite. <laughs> um, please get Spivey on the line so we can talk to. That uh, way, the, the kid already has a prom date. <laughs> Is everything going well? Other than uh, it's the different, it's a different right sex now, than you uh, thought. Yeah, he did say that it would be healthy and everything would be okay. Um, I, right now, Ross is actually punching Paulo and hitting him with a stool. And Why? It doesn't even seem to slow him Why, down. Why, Ross? Hang on, Beth. My legs right. <laughs> does it, does it now, after uh, the using the whip and the stool, the big cat will understand to go up on the ball by itself. <laughs> um, is he mistaking you, Ross, for a Hooters girl? I think he is. What's other people have done before? Of course. Do we have Spivey on the other line to talk to Beth? Okay, Beth, hold on, and we'll try... Get that around his mouth, would you? That tape... we got to do a break here. We'll be back and uh, straighten out this complaint and see if we can straighten out Paulo. And we're back with the Hooters girls. 